You know, these devs really know how to get our attention. Sometimes it feels like they're having an arms race to create the most appealing character models possible. We only benefit from that for multiple reasons to say the least. One reason being because those official models get released to everyone for free, and we break them down on this channel to uncover all of their secrets. Today's breakdown is a special one. The Great Feet War of 2025 will not be forgotten. Some of the most intriguing models from every studio yet. 10 toes down. So it's time to give these models a close inspection, extract all the info that we can, maybe do a quick sniff test, then reverse engineer them to create our own. Here's how our in-house reverse engineered foot looks compared to a foot from Wuthering Waves. Someone once said, don't talk about feet without bringing up Girls Frontline 2. This game in particular has a lot of their models readily available for download on their own website, and they do not disappoint. And if you want, go check it out for yourself, because if I press H right now, this video will be demonetized. But I can go down here and see that even though she does have her shoes on, the devs were kind enough to actually leave her feet in here as well. Meaning we could take all of her shoe, move it off to the side, then we could take this seemingly invisible foot and change the material back to the original. GFL2 is very serious when it comes to feet. They're a good place to reference if you want a more realistic style of foot in your models, as they know how to texture some of the more intricate details like where to apply blush on the foot, what to do for the toenails, and even at the bottom, you can see that it's so detailed to the point where you wonder to yourself, why did they have to go crazy and put literally every crease of the toe folds and the balls of the foot? It is a little uncanny, but out of all the games I've seen, this is the anime game that put the most detail into their feet. To keep things relatively efficient, of course the toe areas have more mesh density, but as it goes to the main foot base, it is merged down with triangles to keep it light in those areas that don't need as much detail. Areas like the heel do get a little more attention, and a little detail in the ankle areas to capture some of those natural curves of the feet. But as you can see, they can capture the ankle bumps quite effectively, even without additional topology, and they've even captured the Achilles quite nicely as well. The toe knuckles also get some love, even though I find this a little bit excessive. But my bias when it comes to feet is weathering waves, and I'm about to show you why. As some of you know, you know is one of my favorite models in terms of overall aesthetics, but I also like the way they designed her feet as well. Wuthering Waves has a little more idealized kind of feet anatomy, so not as realistic, but man, these things are wild. One thing I particularly like about them is how they texture their uh, toenails, as well as this part where they do a very subtle shadow into highlight, which simulates the phalange bones in the feet without actually having to capture them in the mesh itself. Wuthering Waves does take a little more liberty with the mesh density. So you can see here in the heel area, they split this up a little more just to ensure they get that nice curve on the heel. They do have some nice details on the bottom as well, but their fold lines are a lot more subtle than what we see in Girls Frontline 2. Also, having a toe ring is just complete madness. And of course, this exaggerated arch into this high heel height is because she's wearing high heels, like 99% of uh, female gacha characters. A good example for bare feet is Fleur de Lis, just perma walking around with the dogs out. Some other small details that are important for later. Take note the size of the toes. So this one is very small. It's about half the size and length of the other ones. Her toes in particular don't have too much space in between them. And if you notice the toe inserts, they insert at different spots. So instead of like straight across, it's like has this kind of curve. And from the front, you can also see kind of subtly how the inserts of the toes into the base follow a curve as well. Here's another interesting one from Girls Frontline 2. And Girls got the robot grippers. So this one's nice to look at in a couple of cases. One being like you want those semi-robotic toes. And she's got like more natural spacing on her toes, which is how feet would normally look if they're not always in shoes 24-7 that are designed to like scrunch up the toes. By turning on statistics, I can go in and edge select, take one of the toes, make sure all around it is all selected, 12 edges, 
And this is very valuable information for when we do reverse engineer for our own feet. Because I take this number, I divide it by two, then I create a base shape, which in this case would have six edges. That's multiplied again by two when we add subdivision surface. And that's how we would recreate the toe. So let's get into that actually. These are the fruits of our analysis. And it's always a good idea to keep this on the side just as a reference. So in Blender, I'm gonna add a circle object to my scene, set vertices to six, rotation of X and Y to 90. This gives me a nice hexagon shape that I will use for both the toes and the base of the foot. So if you want, go ahead and duplicate that and hide it off to the side or later. Now with it selected, I press tab to enter edit mode. Then I'll select one half and move it to the side and do the same for the other. Now I'm gonna loop cut the top edge for four cuts as well as the bottom edge. This is the exact number of cuts for five toes. Now select everything here and then extrude it along the Y axis. Now I'll enter edge select mode and I'm gonna select these edges and press MA to merge them at center. And this will make it easier for later so we don't have to dissolve as many edges. This is the part right before the toes. Now let's extrude it backwards and scale that extrusion along the Z axis, rotate it a bit and move it upwards or keep it here for flat feet. But for this, we're gonna have a raised heel, so move it up there. And I'm gonna select the middle loop, rotate it as well, and scale it up a bit, creating the area for the balls of the feet. Let's loop cut that in the middle. And in face select mode, let's move this part up a bit, as well as this area, just so that it's not super flat. Same thing on the bottom, just select this face and move it down slightly. And now let's create that ankle area. So while we're still in edit mode, add a circle to the scene with eight vertices this time and a minus 22 degree rotation on the Z axis. You'll get an octagon stop sign shape and we just put it around here in the middle, about this high and about that wide. Now surprisingly, this next part is easy. Select these four points and press F to create a face and do the same for the two edges beside it. Now take these four points at the back of your stop sign, extrude them downwards and backwards, then loop cut them in the middle for two cuts. Then create these faces and the rest of it should be automatic. You just select an edge and keep pressing F. Now, if you get stuck at any point up to here or you just wanna skip this entire step, I always have a free file to skip button your way here. So on my Patreon, you can grab this file for free for your first toe nub and foot base. And my blacksmith $5 tier subs get a file with multiple stages to compare to, including the finished example. Anyways, now that we're here, let's add a subdivision surface modifier in our modifiers tab. As you can see, it looks a little weird because some of the normals are not facing the right way. As you can see, let's use recalculate outside, which is also available under mesh, normals, there. At this point, we can do our first tweaks. Let's flatten out the heel area and some other small changes where your reference will come in handy. Finally, let's prepare our toe loops by creating these edges in between and loop cutting them once each. This will give us 12 edge loops as we apply our subdivision right now. Optionally, we can clean up these areas by merging them like so. And then moving them up so that it's just in line with the rest of the loop. Let's merge these as well. Now that's actually fine, but I actually like to invert this and have the triangles on the opposite sides. Just so that they're like a little more spaced out. So I knife it like that and then I select these edges and dissolve them. Looks neater in my opinion. And then here on the bottom, do something similar. I'll just merge these. I actually won't merge down too much because I want some extra vertices for the balls of the feet. Now time to do a few more tweaks with proportional editing. I make the foot a little longer. And with that, I have to add more supporting loops and I edge slide them to maintain some even spacing. I see that the heel is kind of jagged. So just like the examples earlier, I'm gonna cut a little into it to create these extra faces so that I can make them more curved in this area. Just move those new cuts slightly. Now for this pole, I'll move this vertice up and then cut it like that. Kind of makes sense that there's this loop here and this loop here. And do the same for the other side as well. I'm gonna cut these details for the ankle and I'll merge up here and this will match my leg and ankle opening loops a little closer. I'll adjust here on the other side as well and do something similar. Merging these up top and making this cut. 
Now when I grab that middle face of the ankle, I can just move it out and it simulates that bump right there. Okay, it's starting to come together, but I do want the heel to be a little more raised. So with proportional editing, I just move this part up. Let's also rotate this part a bit. And now we can move on to the toes. Taking that spare hexagon we made earlier, let's put it in front of the foot and extrude it forwards. Let's select these two points and create faces there. Loop cut it in the middle once and let's select these two edges and scale them on the x-axis to pull them a little bit to the outer edges. I'm gonna toggle x-ray on so I can select these points and move them inwards to create that curve at the end. Then let's extrude one more time and bring this selected area upwards to create that little bend, the little indent on the toe. Add your subdivision surface modifier and go ahead and apply it. Okay, let's take this middle loop and proportionally shrink it along the x-axis. Let's activate our auto mirror on the y-axis just so we can work on both sides at the same time. Now get your knife tool and cut from this corner, then straight across, then into the corner. Now stay with me, cut into the middle like this, then all the way to the end, then cut from this corner into the middle. Okay, sorry about that weird extra mirror at the bottom. I'm gonna remove it. It was an extra auto mirror. We gotta do a terminating cut here into the corner as well. And we should be good for cuts for now. So there we go without that weird extra mirror. This extra geometry is needed for the nail details. We've created a kind of nail bed here on the side. So now when we do some sculpts, we can push that area down and creates a kind of bed for the nail to sit into like this. Let's go edit mode just so we can be a little more precise. And for longer toenails, what you can do is select this edge right here, press V to edge split. I'm gonna fix these points a little and then fill in those edges with F. Now I can move these points in and the top ones I can extend out as far as I want them to. Final tweaks to get the curve and the size of the nail that I want. After some tweaks, let's duplicate this toe in object mode to create the other toes. The big toe is the most different, but with some proportional editing, we can just make it wider on the x-axis until we get the desired shape that we want. Then let's duplicate for the other three toes. I'm gonna have them rotating inwards like this, and then I'm gonna play around with the scale of them and the heights at which they insert into the feet. Look at it from the front so that you can place them right in front of the holes. And of course, let's not forget that cute small little pinky toe. This one will be the most rotated and the smallest. And just make sure everything is positioned how you want it to before we go on to the joining phase. These toes are shorter, so I deleted loops at the end of them. And now we should be good to merge it down. Let's apply the mirror modifier for all the toes. Select the base and the ring toe and press Ctrl J to join them into one object. Then edge select the opening loop of the toe and the opening loop of the base. And then use the function bridge edge loops which can also be found in your edge menu. I usually then dissolve this loop and then create a new one in its place to have a smoother transition. Sliding the edges around also makes it a little smoother. I'll do the same for this toe next, so that the last three toe openings can be easily all left click selected. Keep making adjustments as you go. Then of course, let's dissolve that, re-loop it, add an extra loop. That'll create that transition. Now I can go ahead and select the last remaining toes, Control J them to the base, and easily shift all left click the openings like that. And just follow the steps again, bridge edge loops, dissolve the edge, and create new edges. Here I'm selecting the tip of the toe and using control numpad plus. Then I'm switching over to sculpt mode and using the function face sets from edit mode selection. And the reason I do this for each toe is so that when I make sculpt mode changes, I can turn the auto masking into face sets so that when I'm sculpting a single toe, I don't have to affect the other toes around it. And guys, that's pretty much it structure wise. So the rest of this will just be sculpt tweaks, hopefully with a good reference until your foot turns out how you want it to. So here it is side by side with Yuno's foot from Wuwa. 
I think there's still some things we can work on, but that'll be good enough for now, I think. And here they are on model. And when you're joining these to the leg itself, it's as easy as using bridge edge loops if you have an equal number of edges on your loops. If for some reason you don't, that's fine too. But let's say you have 16 on the ankle and 14 for your leg. Well, just merge together two spots before you do bridge edge loops. And it's the same thing. For the seams, what's common is you separate the top half from the bottom half. We'll do the texturing in a future video. Thanks for watching. And once again, thank you to all of my goats who made it here to the end. And I believe there's only hands and face left before we can get to some of that more advanced stuff. I personally can't wait for that. And if you like my videos, please do support them so that I can keep doing this for you guys. Happy one-handed modeling. And as always, have yourselves a good night.